up guys, Druglo here. I'm the only one recording, so if the camera doesn't line up to like the TV and everything and it cuts off my head, I apologize. But let me see, I need to fix it one second. Gotta love it. It's actually off a bit, so let me bring it over here. And there we go, that should fix it. So sorry for that little delay. Hopefully that's fixed. But anyway, everybody knows that Intel Ivy Bridge is coming out, and it is out actually. Uh, price point, um, it's, you know, they're lowering their prices of Sandy Bridge, so Ivy Bridge processors, their price is not that bad for, you know, what you get. You get new technology and everything like that. So, uh, I also, if you guys are interested in getting Ivy Bridge and you have a micro center near, uh, excuse me, nearby, They'll actually take 50 bucks off the motherboard, that's Z77, and with the purchase of a Intel Ivy Bridge processor, so that's pretty good. So we have $149 for uh, the 320, and then the 320-25 is 172, and then the 3240 is 175, so all depends on what you want alright and some of these stories are overlapping and or basically insignificant because the products are already out alright uh, GTX 690 is slated for April 28th 28th is already come and gone they have released it and I'll get into more details about that alright ASRock as you guys know uh, they've been coming out with really good motherboards lately and they actually broke the, uh, I don't know if it's a world record, but they broke uh, the 3770K up to 6.9 gigahertz with LN2. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion. Again, Intel announces third generation core Ivy Bridge processor family. Again, that's already been released, and I'll talk more about that later. All right. Now here is a cooler that I personally wouldn't get, but if you guys are interested and you don't want to hear any fan noise, no fan unveils an all copper CR Tech 95C silent CPU heatsink. It has a TDP up to 100 watts. So here it is right here, and it's huge, absolutely massive. I personally would want a smaller cooler with well, maybe a 500 RPM fan, you know, just to get that air through and not to have something that massive. So there you go, there's some pictures of that. Next up, G-Skill announces new Trident X DDR3 memory for third generation Intel Core processors. Now that the processors are out, aka Ivy Bridge now, a lot of memory manufacturers are going to be pushing for the new uh, memory for those specific kind of processors and everything like that. So they have the DDR3 2800 megahertz 16 gigs so it'll be four sticks and it'll have four gigs on them and they said that the 16 gig kit has successfully achieved the speed of 3320 megahertz and then the 32 gig reached a speed of 2066 megahertz that stock but then when you they overclocked it or fine-tuned it to reach the speed of 2933 megahertz so pretty much Ivy Bridge is memory heaven if you're into tweaking your memory and overclocking your memory Ivy Bridge is probably the perfect match for you next up we have Roswell announces the R5 the sleeper mid tower gaming case with ultra cooling now here it is right here. All right, you have 3.0, you have your standard mic and your audio, then USB right here, SATA all in the front. And it's supposed to be going under $100, I believe. So it it only supports micro ATX and ATX and it has 3 and a quarter drive bays, it has 5 and a quarter drive bays. They have seven expansion slots, they have one USB 3.0, and then they have a 2.0 adapter included. 
two USB 2.0, an eSATA, an audio in and out, which is pretty standard. Now the fans for the front is going to be 220 millimeter fans, one in the rear, which is a 120 millimeter fan. So I don't know how this is uh, the sleeper case because I still think the NZXT Beta Evo case is still a great case, and it's like 50 bucks, and you get a lot for your money. You get cable management holes and everything like that. There aren't any other pictures here, unfortunately. But they said you can put eight fans into this computer if you really want to. Next up, Inu 3D iChill GTX 680 Ice Dragon card exposed. And it's definitely a different layout from what we're used to. And uh, let me see if I can... There you go. There's the card itself. And their design is really unique, if I can get it to load up. But basically, what they enabled this card to do is you can take it apart and actually clean everything out. You can take the fans out and get all the dust out. And unfortunately, I have an advertisement. Hopefully, that will go away. Sorry about that. So you'll actually be able to take out the fans and everything, which is really awesome. Next up, NVIDIA pushes for 45mm wafers, contemplates expansion to global fanneries, Samsung. So, this would be good. I personally <clears throat> think that's awesome. So, they're basically, what I really wish they could do is more or less have these foundries that produce these products to be efficient. So, there, in turn, the products will be cheaper. They wouldn't have to charge as much because they are producing a lot. So, I think TS. MC, that's AMD if I'm correct. I hope I am. If not, sorry that I'm wrong. So, just letting you guys know they're trying to push that out there. Next up, we have the Cooler Master Half XM. Basically, they took the Half X and they miniaturized it, if that makes sense. And this is what it, they came out with. So, here it is. Here's a picture of it. Alright, yeah, holes for cable management, very limited in my opinion. Uh, they have plenty of room for your hard drives, your uh, drive bay drives, everything like that. Looks like if you really want to, you might be able to squeeze a 360 uh, rad up right in here. Let me see if I can blow it up right here, but it all depends on how much room you have between the motherboard and the rad and then the fans so I'm not sure but it looks like you can do that if you can do that that will be awesome so the price point is $129 and then nuclear <coughs> excuse me nuclear powered preamp promises incredibly excessive accuracy with a built-in atomic clock <coughs> and basically with the atomic clock it's gonna basically solve the jittery uh, issues that some of these have and a lot of people say it's a gimmick but really the most high-end preamps like this have a atomic clock in there so that is pretty cool and it's probably going to cost way 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 expensive there it is right there another picture it looks awesome I'm guarantee you give you really awesome audio quality and it looks like it's meant for studios too by the way And then Aya Yama releases the ProLite T22 34MC multi-touch monitor. Now, <clears throat> pretty much a lot of monitor companies are going to go geared and getting prepped for Windows 8 and everything. So that's why they're starting to come out with these touch screens and everything like that. And it has a recommended price of $629 euro, so probably 630 US. has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080 uh, let's see, it has a 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio, it has a 178 by 178 viewing angles, has D-sub and DVI inputs and USB connectivity, and it has an 8 MS response time. So here it is right here, it has an IPS <clears throat> monitor, sorry guys, I'm not feeling that well, so... My voice is cutting in and I apologize. Alright. 
Next up, AMD chooses Computex 2012 to do, excuse me, to release the 2012, uh, basically, Computex 2012, that's when they want to release the 7990. So you're going to have to wait. <clears throat> it says it's going to have 4,096 graphics core next stream processor and 6 gigs of GDDR5 memory and the ability to drive six monitors iFinity right out of the box. Now, the price. We already know, or if you guys don't know, the price of the 690. How is this going to compare into that? Is it going to be cheaper or is it going to be higher? So we'll see. Next up, we have EA Post Crisis 3 gameplay trailer and box art and uh, I don't know what to think about the Crisis series anymore, just due to the fact of what they did in Crisis 2. They said, oh, you're going to have DirectX 11, you're going to have DirectX 11, and all that stuff. <clears throat> well, instead of waiting and implementing the DirectX 11, they released it with the consoles. We already knew as gamers it didn't have DirectX 11. Then they said, like, what, two months down the road or something like that, oh, here's a patch to make it look good. So... Are a lot of PC gamers going to be pre-ordering the Crisis 3 series knowing that? I don't know. Are console players going to pre-order that? Probably because they wouldn't notice, uh, excuse me, wouldn't notice the difference on the consoles because they're saying that they want Crisis 3 to be the best looking game and blah blah blah. But look what they did to Crisis 2. How can you restore our faith when you already messed up Crisis 2 in a sense because you released a game, then later on released a patch when it should have already been implemented as I said before. What do you guys think? Next up, Firefox 12 has been officially released. Also, if you're interested in Firefox 13 beta, that's been released, so you can download that and add your input and all the bugs and all that stuff so they can fix it. So that's pretty awesome. And then again, Asus shatters performance barriers with Intel Z77 chipset and third generation i7 GPUs and pretty much they're just saying that uh, one of the motherboards hit a 7 gigahertz clock speed threshold on the Asus P8Z77 V Deluxe motherboard. So they also have five other records, five other world records on several motherboards and there's more to come. And they have all the, what is it, I'm trying to think what it's called, but all the proof you want to call it, and all that stuff, so, right here. And then next up, Asus P8Z77V Premium gets teased on on video, and again, it's probably already released just due to the fact that it is the 1st of May, so it's probably already out and everything. Alright, MSI H61 bags highest memory speed in its class with the 3770K and the ME8L BIOS. And they said that fastest in the world with DDR3 memory support up to 2400 megahertz. So that's pretty impressive. So you guys who want Ivy Bridge and you want those really fast speeds on RAM, Ivy Bridge is the way to go. Now I have a good news for the guys who use Linux. Steam is going to be coming out for Linux. How awesome is that? And it'll be in the next few months. There isn't a specific date yet, but they're telling us, hey, be patient. It's going to be coming out in a couple of months. Next up, Max Payne 3. If you want that game, you're going to have to have 35 gigs of memory, or uh, 35 gigs of hard drive space, excuse me. And this is really, really weird in how offset the settings are for recommended settings. Like they said, an Intel 2.4 gigahertz dual core processor, an 8600 GT512 RAM, DX9 compatible for sound. Of course, drive storage space is 35 gigs. That's the minimum. And then operating system XP Vista or Windows 7. Now, they're moving on to 
can you can benefit from which is way way uh, like high end stuff here which is really weird now they said that the Intel Core i7 3960X or the AMD FX 8150 16 gigs of RAM and Nvidia GTX 680 2 gig card DX compatible with Dolby Digital Live 35 gigs of storage space as I said before, Windows XP, Vista, or 7. So, this is my question. When they start implementing stuff like this, A, is it poorly coded? B, did they implement DLC into the game and then they're going to make people pay for it even though it's already on their hard drive? So we'll see if they've done that. All right. Let me get out of here real quick. Sorry about that. AMD released the new WHQL driver 12.4. So if you guys want that, you can go ahead and get that. Get some new benefits and everything. Also, they released or leaked out uh, the 12.5 driver for AMD, but it is in its beta stages, so no one really knows what it fixes, and it probably has a lot of bugs in it and two as well so basically if you download the 12.5 uh, buyer beware more or less alright now this is something interesting and uh, people might buy it people might not but basically COS introduces uh, the first Wi-Fi headphone system to get music directly from the web so basically they already have a built-in uh, basically a wireless card which is about the size of a dime into the headphones and you just connect it to your router and you'll be able to get music off from the internet as far as if it uses like uh, Pandora or Last FM or you have to pay services I personally don't know it might say in here but when I skimmed through it it really uh, didn't say anything so you can use, uh, it says you can create local wireless connection whenever a Wi-Fi or hotspot is unavailable. So we'll see how it goes on this. And I'm still reading, seeing if you can use any Pandora and all that stuff. So you might have to pay maybe once a month or something like that, but I'm not sure. All right. Now. I'm probably going to stutter because I'm not sure how this is correctly pronounced. I'm saying it's Kaspersky, Kaspersky, and they say that Apple is 10 years behind Microsoft in terms of security. And um, yeah, so I wonder what they have to say, what Apple has to say about that. And um, the main reason. Apple for a very, very long time has been a secure operating system is because not a lot of people were going to attack and find out loopholes within certain programs where they could embed a virus. It's always been Windows, okay? Windows was always out there so everybody, you know, uses Windows and now the trend is turning around to basically you're going to have equal in both parties between Apple and Microsoft. With Apple, more people are saying, hey, more people are buying Apple products. Hey, they probably have a lot of money because a laptop is like 1200 or two grand for a laptop. So if I'm in, I am able to embed a virus, I can take their information right off their computer and I can steal their bank account number and get money from that they again it's been done on the windows platform as well but it's just showing that apple is more vulnerable towards these attacks and everything like that example when oracle came out with a patch for the java uh... loophole they had it came out in february and then apple waited so long to where like one in five max had this or something like that I'm just trying to remember, but Macs now are going to probably get more attacks, uh, more attack now, even more than Windows, just because 
now they're the next target, I guess you want to call it, in my opinion. Alright, next up, three for free. Basically, NVIDIA is trying to promote the heck out of their cards and everything, the 7900 series, so they're going to give you three free games. I can see Drift or Dirt Showdown Des, uh, Des X, and then a game I can't really pronounce or see. So I guess you have, it says, like, it looks like Next UIZ, so I'm not sure what kind of game that is. So you have Deus Ex and then Dirt Showdown. I didn't even know that was out or even if it's out already. Next up, Portal 2 fan, uh, excuse me, fans. They're going to have some testing beginning May 8th. So if you're interested in this, go ahead and check that out. And basically, what this Perpetual testing initiative allows players to create, share, and play Portal 2 puzzles. So that's awesome. So basically, they're trying to get more involvement within Portal 2 and have people create their own maps, share their own maps, have people play their maps. So that's really awesome for the Portal 2 community. Next up, Netgear uh, excuse me, introduces Industries' first 802.11 AC Wi-Fi router. Basically, what this router is probably going to do is improve the speed of the 5 gigahertz range, which would be awesome. So it says, fifth, it says a dual band Wi-Fi router enabling fifth generation Wi-Fi, parentheses 5G Wi-Fi at gigabit speeds. So I was right, not even reading the whole article. So basically, it's going to improve the speeds. Hopefully, you improve the um, area or how far you can be from the router because N generally does have a limited distance it can do and you can and maintain that speed as well alright next up bad news anybody who's a stalker fan stalker 2 has been cancelled done is completely over with unfortunately and stalker is a really good series and I guarantee you there's an argument or something like that or they couldn't agree on something so basically it said the studio said its new investors were not able to reach an agreement with the stalker rights owners really it's basically all about this if you're not giving them money they're not going to be interested and that's exactly what happened you have really good games but people don't want to produce a game they just want to be greedy about it and I'm not saying the people who are creating the game but it's the investors that prohibited the game from being produced. Alright, Intel IU Bridge, as you guys know, it, it's already out there and it runs hot. Alright, it is a given that it's going to run hot. Um, I pretty much knew from day one it was going to run hot. Well, Jason, how do you know that it was going to run hot before you even saw any information about this processor. Well, you got to think about it and just apply common sense, in my opinion, which is common sense, maybe different from someone else. But when you're making these processors, you got 45, then you go to 32, and then you go to 22, something has to give. And when you're doing a 22 nanometer architecture on these processors, everything is just being tightly packed together, like, you know, like, I'm trying to find an example, but imagine a whole bunch of dots really close together, and that's what Ivy Bridge is. You have all the transistors and everything like that, and on top of that, you have the new uh, tri-gate uh, technology that's in there instead of a bi-gate. They're using a tri-gate, and you have everything tightly knit together, and you're putting it on a real small die, but then you have the IHS, and it's no, there's no different design in that, so basically, there's a whole bunch of heat being generated, but there's not enough, I guess you want to call it, the heat sink enough to disperse the uh, heat efficiently enough because you're only using 22 nanometer architecture. So what they would might have to do is revise the IHS to where it comes out a little wider to dissipate that heat faster. They might have to do that. But that is why um, the Ivy Bridge temperatures are hot. It's just because it's such a small architecture for CPUs and everything and it's also an advancement in 
and technology as well, so I completely understand why it's hot. Okay? Also, they're saying that instead of using solderless uh, flux, or fluxless solder, I'm sorry, they're using thermal paste, so I don't know if this is true for the ones being released, but for the uh, engineering samples that are being tested out, they said, hey, they're using thermal paste. So that is the reason why. So if you want to read more about it, here it is, and I'll post it up in the link description below. Next up, again, here it is, the dual GTX graphics card, the 690. Basically, it's two GTX 680s on one card. It has four gigs total, and the processor or the GPU core at stock, I think it is 910, but then when it boosts up with the turbo boost that they have, it is 1016. So, here it is. Let's see if I'm right or wrong, because here we go. We have CUDA cores, 3072. Base clock is 915, so it was one off on the base core clock and then the boost clock is 10 19 so it's 3 off eh, not that bad memory configuration I was right is 4 gigs memory speed is 6 and then the power connector is going to be 8 plus 8 TDP is 300 watts they have 3 DVI outputs and a mini display port and the bus interface of course is going to be 3.0 so if you guys are interested in this card and wondering how much it costs, it'll cost you about a thousand dollars. That's right, a thousand dollars for this card. So here are some benchmarks and everything like that. Uh, frames per second, 2500 by 16, 4 times AA, 16 times AF maximum settings and everything like that. So you can see all this stuff and if you're really interested in that, go ahead and check it out. So, uh, and they really have it cut off. They don't have a definitive, you know, cutoff point where the graphics goes 20, 40, 60, so you're going to have to estimate it. But more or less, it's maybe a little more than double, less than double from a standard GTX 680. So, hopefully, the scaling is a lot better as well and all that fun stuff. All right, again, $1,000 for this card if you want it. Again, we have Ivy Bridge processors. They're already started selling. They started selling April 29th. I know I'm a little late. Uh, basically, my work schedule has totally changed from going in the morning. Now I have to go in at night and work nights, unfortunately, or the swing shift. So I apologize about that. So let's see what the real prices are. Okay. The 3770K is 350 The... 3770S is 320, the 3070, 3.4 GHz locked is at 319, the 3570K is at 249, the 3550 is at 219, the 3450 is at 200, and the 3450S is at 200. So there's the prices for you guys. Next up, we have the GTX 670 Ti specifications, performance detailed, and everything. And this said that the card's going to go for $400, it looks like. And it said it's supposed to have better performance than the 7950 and the 580. And it'll perform better uh, performance per watt, of course. That's a given. And then also NVIDIA may release another GK104 base card, which would be GPU with 1,152 CUDA cores, two disabled SMXs, and 192-bit interface. So, uh, excuse me, suggested price would be around $249. And again, the 670, it will be 400 it looks like. And I'll have 1,344 CUDA cores, 112 texture units, and 32 raster operating units, and 
card will be released with the same memory as a GTX 680, 2 gigs of GDDR5 RAM with a 256-bit interface. Alright, next up, Intel admits that IV Bridge runs hotter because of the 22 nanometer shrink. Again, there you go. I was right. So, and they said it's not due because of the Tim either. So, yeah. There you go. Next up, ECS. Now, ECS is a small company in my opinion. They're probably going to be bigger, probably towards the Asian markets, uh, excuse me, Asian markets, I think. But they're doing something incredible. And we'll see if other uh, manufacturers such as EBJ, uh, Gigabyte, you know, Asus, and all these other motherboard manufacturers to see if they're going to start introducing super alloy chokes, uh, not chokes, chokes, to guarantee board stability. Basically, the uh, chokes that are normally made is used with iron or ferrite uh, materials for the magnetic cores of the chokes. So we'll see if this board will absolutely produce this ability that users want and everything like that. So we will see about that. So that's pretty much it for the news. I stopped that Sunday. I know it's Tuesday. And I apologize for that. Again, just work. Been busy, busy, busy. And all that stuff. But thank you guys for being patient. Thank you guys for showing support and everything like that. Really do appreciate it. And as always, comment, subscribe, rate this video, click that like button. You guys have a great day.